Hello, so today I'm going to show you how I made my own peel and stick wallpaper out of regular wallpaper and just a few other supplies. Okay, so let's get started with what you're going to need to do this. The first thing is wallpaper, and then you're going to need some painter's tape. It's best to go with a nice neutral color just in case anything shows from underneath the wallpaper, because a lot of painter's tape is blue or green. And then you're going to need some double-sided tape, and you're going to need an X-Acto knife to cut out any weird shapes on your wall. And it's also good to have scissors to cut directly off the roll, or just cut the tape or anything like that. And you're going to need a wallpaper smoother or any kind of hard, flat surface to just smooth the paper down when you're putting it on the wall. And then you're going to need a measuring tape to just measure out the spaces in between the paper. I ended up not really using this as much as I thought I would, but it's good to have. And then the last thing you're going to need is a binder clip to just kind of roll up the paper. Um, I'll kind of show how this works later on, but just a binder clip or any kind of clip to keep the paper out of the way when you're working underneath it would be good to have. The first thing you're going to need to do is start outlining your wall with the painter's tape. Just go around the entire perimeter of the wall and anything that kind of sticks out or you need to cut the wallpaper to fit in. You can see here I kind of went around those random pieces of wood. And once you've outlined the entire wall with the painter's tape, you're going to want to go in and start putting the lines down on the inside to stick the other side of the wallpaper. When I started this, I thought that I could just do one strip down and kind of have the two pieces of wallpaper meet in the middle. I found out that this didn't really work, especially because my wall is a bit wonky. So I ended up running out of double-sided tape when I was doing this and I had to wait a couple days to get more. So you can see here, there's just one strip down the middle but I did add in the other when I figured it wasn't going to work out with just one. So my original plan was to measure out the spacing with the measuring tape, but here I kind of figured out that it was just easier to use the roll as a measure, so that's what I'm doing when I'm putting the roll up to the wall. <laughs> since um, but that was super helpful because it is really hard to get everything smooth and flat so it was really useful to be able to do that 
I don't know the exact brand of the tape, but I'll put the link down below. Uh, it worked really well for me. The only thing that was kind of hard was peeling off the other side of the tape sometimes. I haven't tried this with other double-sided tape, but this one worked really well for me, so I would recommend it if you're planning on doing this in the future. So now I'm just going in and starting the second panel. This one was a little bit more challenging just because you have to line up the pattern. I would recommend if you're worried about having it not line up or anything like that to get a smaller pattern just because it's easier to line up, especially if you have a weird wall like me. Like I think if you have a standard straight square wall, the wallpaper is made for that and everything will line up easier. But for this wall, because it's so weird, it was really good that I ended up getting a small print. Otherwise, I think I might have dri driven myself a bit crazy. So here you can see better um, with me using the X-Acto knife to cut it down to the wall. I just kind of lined everything up, folded it, creased it really well, and then just used the knife to trace the edge of the wall. And then after the top, it was pretty easy from there. I just did the same thing I did on the last one, which is roll it up and use the clips to keep it out of my way. And then I did everything in sections and worked my way down to the bottom of the wall. And then I realized I didn't have enough double-sided tape to finish the last panel, so I went in with my X-Acto knife and just cut out any overhanging tape. Here is kind of why I said you should just get a neutral colored painter's tape because some will stick over the edges, like I went in and cut along the sides, but some will just overhang no matter what you do. So I would definitely recommend getting a neutral colored tape or whatever matches your walls or wallpaper the closest. And here's the finished product for the time being until I get more tape. Um, you can see there's kind of a couple bubbles in the wall. Um, my wall, like I said, is not straight so there were a couple imperfections in the finished job but if you have a flat wall you shouldn't really have that problem so this is a few days later when i finally got my double-sided tape you can see i moved everything back in and it's a mess i had a lot of trouble with this final one i had two pieces of wallpaper that were about the same size so i was trying to figure out which one I was supposed to use. <laughs> that was long enough, one was just a bit too short, so here I'm switching them. And then I needed to go and line up the top. Another thing was that the wallpaper was just a bit too wide for the walls, so I needed to go and cut down the side as well, making everything extra difficult. But I did end up getting it right, again I just went in and cut all the edges and just cut out any extra painters tape that was showing from underneath with the X-Acto knife. Um, you can see it doesn't quite line up in some places but it's better down here so it's not perfect but close to perfect. I also have this hump in the wall that I just noticed so I don't know if I have a body in there who knows what it is this is a really old house 
So here is the final product with everything moved in. This is a couple months after I've hung it and everything has stayed in place. So it does withstand the test of time at least for a couple months. And yeah, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think honestly doing this method was better for my wall because I think the peel and stick wouldn't have been as forgiving as this just because this one only sticks on the edges and not in the middle. I honestly thought this was going to be really frustrating and I found it relatively easy. Obviously there were a few bits that weren't the easiest, but I would definitely recommend trying it if you can't find a good peel and stick wallpaper. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.